In this lesson, we learn about working with raster data. Raster data refers to continuous data, and common types include images representing maps or aerials, as well as elevation data. We begin with a brief discussion of the types of raster data, downloading elevation data from the USGS National Map website and viewer. We then move on to changing the look or symbology of raster data. Next, we work with merging multiple rasters into a single file and clipping a part of that raster to a smaller extent. We then end the lesson with creating contour lines from a raster. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's get started. There are numerous file formats for raster data. QGIS easily works with most formats, treats them as native file formats, um, and we'll be actually looking at a pretty common file format in this lesson. Now, if you find a data set somewhere else, that doesn't seem to work with QGIS or you're having difficulty working with it, leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Maybe I'll even create another tutorial. So let's go ahead and get some raster elevation data. A great place to do this in the US is the national map from the USGS. Now if you need data for other parts of the world, I've included a link to download tiles from the shuttle radar topography mission, also known as SRTM data. The file format for this may look strange, it's a .hgt file, but QGIS easily opens this format. Now we'll be working with a different format in the files that we download from the national map here, but I just wanted to make a note about that. For this tutorial, we're going to navigate to the area around Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, here we are. So we're going to go ahead and use the box point selection method and drag out a selection square here. But before we do that, we need to look at the type of data that we can download. So as you can see on the left hand side, there are numerous data to download here. Select the elevation products or 3DEP tab. Clicking that checkbox will expand this and you'll be able to see other types of layers here still more choices. So use the show availability selections to see what data is available in the area. We're going to go ahead and select the 1 9th arc second DEM data. So go ahead and click on show availability and we'll see now that there's actually quite a bit here that we can use. So let's make sure that we select that, deselect anything else and, and this will work. So go ahead and click and drag a rectangle here. And once you've done that, you can now click the Find Products button, and this will show you data that you can download here. Click the Footprint and Thumbnail options to see which tiles overlap the selection area. So you can see here, I think we'll go with these two data sets. The thumbnail doesn't bring anything up. Click the Footprint and Thumbnail options to go ahead and see what data lines up. We're going to go ahead and use these first two for this tutorial. So when you found one that works, click the download link. And you can go ahead and just open this. It's a zip archive. Here we have the zip archive now downloaded and open. And as you can see, we have a whole host of different kinds of data in here. We have JPEG files. We have shape files. The shape file in here is just going to be a rectangle representing the area of the Earth's surface that this raster data corresponds to. Go ahead and I just select all of these and copy them to my local hard drive. Let's look at the downloaded data in QGS. Go ahead and add one of these shape files. I'm going to adjust the symbology here. Let's go ahead and add the raster data itself. This is the IMG, that is a common raster format. It stands for image. Double click it to add, and now we can see this raster data. So the data is easily recognizable as elevation data. You are now ready to work with symbolizing your raster data. We symbolize raster data using the layer styling tab, just like we did with vector data. Typically, when you add raster data, it will have a grayscale color scheme assigned to it. Change this by clicking the single band gray drop down menu in the layer styling tab. Select single band pseudo color. We have numerous color ramps to choose from. Click the color ramp drop down arrow and have a look at a couple different color ramps. Don't forget there's an extended selection with the all color ramps sub menu here. I'm going to go ahead and check the spectral one. I like this and it looks familiar to me. 
One way to rapidly improve the look of elevation data is by combining symbolizations. Select the raster data, right click, and choose duplicate layer. I'm going to go ahead and remove this extra data set here. So we're just working with these two. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Select the item you just duplicated or the duplicated layer. Let's turn that on. Let's go to the layer styling. Click the drop down menu and choose hill shade. Now, of course, we can't see that because it's obscured by the layer above it. So click that layer and let's go to the transparency setting and change that to something like 80%. Let's go down to the duplicated layer. Let's go ahead and set this at something like 20%. We just want it barely showing through. But if we zoom in and turn that layer on and off, we can see that this has added a lot of definition to our raster data set. So you've now created new symbology for your freely available raster elevation data. This looks pretty good. Now, what if our study area is larger than the single tile we just downloaded? Let's return to the national map and download a neighboring tile. So go ahead and click the download button here. And once that's completed, copy all of the files out of that zip archive into a working folder on your hard drive. So here we can see the contents of that newly downloaded folder. We can see our new image file. So if we double click, we'll add that and we can zoom out a bit and we can see that this lines up perfectly. However, the symbology is different. So let's go ahead and change that to match the accompanying or neighboring tile. It'll automatically usually choose the last color ramp you've chosen. These aren't the same color along that line because they have different ranges. In other words, they don't have the exact same highest and lowest values. We could try to fine tune the color ramp for both of these tiles, but we'll never get it perfect. This will become even harder if we had additional tiles. So the solution here is to merge or mosaic these raster tiles. We're going to create a new file that copies the data from both of these individual tiles into that new file. So we do this by searching for merge in the processing toolbox and you'll choose merge from underneath raster miscellaneous and then you go ahead and select both of these rasters and if you had more you would select more. Click OK. We need to choose the correct output data type and the way we determine if that's been selected correctly is to look at the properties for one of these rasters and scroll down until we see the data type. It is correct, it does match, so we can close that. We also wanna look at the profile. And what this does is it sets a type or level of compression for the output joined or merged file. We'll go ahead and leave this at default, and then we'll choose to save this to a permanent file. Likely QGIS will suggest the TIFF format. That's a good format, even though there are dozens of other ones. We'll stick with that and we'll go, I'm just going to name it merged. So go ahead and click run. This may take a few moments depending on your computer, but once it's complete, click the close button and you'll see your new merged raster combining the tiles from the previous two individual files. Let's go ahead and change the symbology for this merged data set. Click single band gray dropdown, choose single band. It'll choose the color ramp you were previously looking at. And so if you turn this on and off, you'll see now that since the highest and lowest value is the same because this is one file, you don't get that break in the data that we were seeing in the separate files. So you've now joined and symbolized two freely downloaded raster elevation data sets. This is looking even better. So what if the opposite had been true? What if you only need a portion of the original file? Well, we can accomplish this in QGIS as well. Add the area clip shape file. I'm gonna go ahead and symbolize this so we can sort of see through it. And we're going to use this rectangle to go ahead and clip out that portion of the raster that falls within it. So the tool we're going to want to use for this is called Clip Raster by Mask. So we'll search for that in the processing toolbox, double click to open it, and our input layer, we're going to go ahead and choose one of the single rasters, and I know which one this is that falls underneath there. And then of course our mask layer is that polygon we've just added. We're not gonna really worry too much about the source coordinate system, but we do care about the target coordinate system. So I'm going to go ahead and check one that I know measures distance in meters, because one of the things I'm going to do with this clipped raster data is create contours. And I wanna know what measurement those contour lines are displaying. In other words, are they measuring elevation in feet or meters? In this case, I'd like them to do that in meters. I'll go ahead and save this file and I'm just going to name it clipped. Go ahead and click run. 
when this is complete, you can click close and you can already see that it has added that subset of the raster layer. We can clip these other ones or turn these other ones off. And here we have our clipped raster data set. Now that we have a smaller area of interest, let's create contour lines, symbolize and label them using the clipped information from the larger raster or DEM data set. DEM standing for digital elevation model. QGIS has an aptly named tool for this, so we'll go to the processing toolbar and search for contour. Under raster extraction, we'll double click the contour tool and we'll make sure that our input layer is selected because we had it selected in the layers panel. It's automatically selected. The band number is correct. And let's go ahead and do five meter intervals between these contour lines. And we know these are going to be meters because we set that coordinate system in the previous step. Go ahead and click run. And when this is completed, you can click the close button and you'll see that we have now added contour lines to this data set. We can use the layer styling tab to change how these contour lines appear. So let's go ahead and make them black. The thickness looks good. We can also go ahead and label these lines. Click the label sub tab, click the labels drop down menu and choose single labels. We'll use the value from the elevation field to label these. And we can see here, if we zoom in a bit, we can start to see our contour lines being labeled. We can go ahead and we can do things like change the font. We can also give them a buffer so that maybe they become a little easier to read. We can also change their placement. And basically, as you move around these, you would want to go ahead and experiment with them and see what works best for you. If my contours are too close together, I could of course rerun the contour tool, changing the interval value to better match my map. So as always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.